question. I'll talk very much about the science and the scientific community and not very much from the ecosystem service partnership. You've heard lectures and ideas and results the whole uh, week, but very much about another partnership with almost the same acronym, only we added an S, the Earth System Science uh, Partnership, which is one of the partnerships of the, the international global change research uh, programs um, sponsored by the International Council of, uh, of Science. And one of the programs within that partnership is Diversitas. And Diversitas over the last 10 years has been quite instrumental in supporting the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment, but also in setting up the whole discussions on IPBES, the Intergovernmental Panel on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services. They do a lot of biodiversity research. They're both interdisciplinary research, both economists, ecologists, biologists. They look at the systematics, they look at the ecosystem uh, scale and very much at the ecosystem uh, services. It's a big international uh, program run from, uh, from Paris and if you want to have more information, just give a little bit the uh, flair of that program, you just go to their, uh, their website. But ICSU has also developed another program that's very much ecosystem change and society, the PEX uh, program. And PEX was focusing after the Millennium Assessment was finished on ecosystem services and human well-being, but very much on how do we actually measure it? How do we actually develop the different indicators and the different scale issues in there? At the Millennium Assessment and also the TEEP uh, report provided a series of uh, unanswered questions and challenges very clearly displayed by Rose a few minutes uh, ago. And PEX really looks into that. It's a short-term uh, program of five years led by Steve Carpenter, uh, one of the chairs of the Millennium Assessment, and really setting the scene there. They have a working report on what they are going to do, and they recently published a paper in PNAS on setting the scene of, of their, uh, their work. Now these are two of the examples of the ICSU uh, programs. But if you look at the world, and here you actually see the brightest spot in the world, Wageningen University, um, brightest spot because of the brightest people. But it's very much if we look at the world and we look at some of the, the problems, that's the human pressure, population pressure. A lot of pe people, the richest people, 20% in the developed uh, country, the poorest, 80% in the developing countries. We see climate change and we really have a big discussion at the moment on which level the different uh, greenhouse gases should be stabilized not to have dangerous uh, impact. We have the ecosystem decline, the losses in biodiversity, I've heard a lot about that this uh, week, and then the whole surprises, the uh, tipping points, etc. And there's really all those kind of problems change the world and we have to cope with it, we have to one way or the other manage with it. And therefore the Earth System Science Partnership was established uh, 10 years ago. It's a partnership initially of the bigger programs, Diversitas, the International Geosphere Biosphere Program, the International Human Dimension Program and the World Climate Research Program together with the Capacity Building Program START which is already 25 years old and focused very much on Asia and uh, Africa and a little bit on uh, the countries in, in Latin America. And the Earth System Science Partnership has developed a whole set of joint projects, very much integrated projects on carbon, water, food, food systems and uh, health. And is now moving slowly towards sustainability. So that's a partnership looking very much at integrated science for sustainability, as is also listed in the uh, mission statement of the whole Earth System Science uh, Partnership. We have an own journal, it was established uh, three years uh, ago, and I have to make a little bit uh, an announcement for, for the journal, of course, 
because Friday is always my editor-in-chief day, looking at papers, reviewing papers, and now I'm here, so I have to take the opportunity a little. But there we also publish some of the science plan and the strategic science questions for these kind of uh, programs. What we also do is very much communicating the science. So we have every year now, it's become a, a tradition, a session at the um, plenary meeting of the Climate Convention, where all the delegates are sitting, listening, and it's within the, the plenary, we have two hours to update them on the, the science. And Willem very clearly said that all the science is known and the problems are very well uh, known. <laughs> but if you listen about the questions of these delegates, a lot of things are not known by the people who actually make the decisions. So there the dialogue is extremely important. And I want to give you a small flavor of what we discussed last June. We updated them on ocean acidification, one of the next major problems of the, the CO2 emissions. We discussed the biodiversity loss in the Climate Convention and stressed that there is a very strong need to actually link the Climate Convention with the Biodiversity Convention. There are an awful lot of synergies uh, to gain. We talked about the planetary boundaries and you've probably seen that figure many times before. And we talked about the emissions and sinks of uh, CO2. And if you look in the Climate Convention, the CO2 are always contributed to countries because countries are the parties within the uh, Convention. But if you start looking at countries, China is the biggest emitter. If you divide by the number of people, China is an average emitter and Kuwait, Australia, Luxembourg and the US are the biggest uh, emitter. And the Netherlands is also within the top, uh, top 20. But if you start correcting for trade, then the picture changes again. The emissions of China are reduced by 40% because most of the products in China are used in Japan, North America, and uh, Europe. So we try to push a little bit those kind of discussions into the uh, convention. And of course, we discussed the mistakes of the uh, IPCC report and the problems which are at the moment occurring in the, uh, the Himalaya. So it's very much what we do within the Earth System Science Partnership. But there is a transition going on. There's a big reorganization going on within the, uh, the programs. If you look at the programs, there's a lot of projects. There are millions of different uh, acronyms. It's actually a jungle uh, of acronyms at uh, the moment. And the funding agencies in the world, NSF in the US, um, NERC in, in the UK, NWO here in the Netherlands, really stressed that we have to simplify and reorganize the different programs. And that is becoming a Earth System Science for Global Sustainability initiative. And there are a whole set of grand challenges. There was a paper published, or policy brief, policy forum, published in uh, Science late last uh, year. There's a bigger report coming from ICSU, and there's a report coming from the uh, funding agencies where they actually provide the strong same message. And at the moment there's an alliance of several UN organizations, the funding agencies and the scientific organizations to actually develop that new program. That's almost an Apollo project on global sustainability research. And if you look at the past, the focus was very much on natural systems from the perspective of the natural uh, sciences. But here we really want to have an international uh, program, an interdisciplinary integrated program where also the social sciences actually sit in the, uh, the driver uh, seat and that we focus very much on solutions rather than understanding all the, uh, all the problems. And this is a diagram after a lot of workshops which was actually evolved. And of course, there's a lot of questions and observations and ideas uh, behind it, but time doesn't allow to go into the depth. But the f forecasting is very much understanding the different systems in time and space with all the different scale interactions. The observing is developing the indicators, the observing systems to actually feed that uh, understanding. And it's not only 
the natural science part, uh, the ecosystems, the atmosphere, soils, etc. It's also very much the social science data. What are the drivers? Why are pe people behaving differently, etc. That kind of data is actually very important to get on board as well. And then the confining links very much to the discussion of tipping points. How do we deal with it? How can we cope with it? When could it happen? What are the uh, probabilities? The responding very much to governance uh, systems at the different level from local to global and the communication between the science and all the different uh, stakeholders and innovation and I'm not sure if I'm still happy with this picture of a geoengineering ship trying to change the Elbia of the oceans but it's really looking at innovating new governance systems, new technologies to really deal with these kind of uh, problems. So the focus of this program is very much at sustainability research. We're discussing at the moment how to do this reorganization, how to actually reach out to the different users, like policymakers, reach out to the different uh, regions. And in March next year, there will be a major conference, Planet Under Pressure, where the new initiative will be presented and where there's a lot of discussion on these kinds of problems, but also very strongly on their uh, solution. And this conference, Planet Under Pressure, fits in into the Rio Plus 20 conference later that year where a lot of discussion goes on on green economy, etc. And finally, uh, the Global Change programs very much try to develop a very integrated approach. It's not only the integration of the disciplines, it's also the integration of the different sectors and the different users and the different scales. And I very much invite the simple acronym, the ESP, to join all the ESSP activities and really uh, collaborate. Thank you very much.